stories focused on police, police brutality. Um, I think, in my opinion, social media, phone cameras have been game changing that way. Do you feel like these things have always occurred? They just haven't been captured on film? <laughs> Def. <laughs> I think that the police have been doing this. And the only reason I feel that way is because them having cameras on isn't changing anything about their behavior. Mm. They just don't care. Hmm. I think not all police. I'm not even going to sit here and, and say all police are bad because that's not true. I actually know a lot of really good officers who have good intentions, but it's I've noticed it's only like patrol officers doing this shit. Like it's not lieutenants and captains. Not to say they don't, but that I'm seeing it's it's like the the lowest ranking officers are just like itching for something to do because you'll even hear them say it in the background on the camera. I was just watching the one yesterday where they arrested the wrong guy, like they had a warrant for someone and mm -hmm. then just didn't check his ID, that whole thing, and they tased him, and I'm just like, body camera on and all that, he's lying with the camera on, like, oh yeah, we got it all on camera, like I did the right thing, and I'm just like... Oh, he was wearing a body camera? Camera on, he's like, I did everything right, I have on my body camera, knowing he lied and, you know, pleading our protocol. Just Do you feel can't take growing it. up in the stories you heard things may have actually been worse or they're just as bad as ever? Nothing's changed really. I mean, I think, you know, it could have been worse. It could have been worse before the cameras and now they are just so used to it that they just forget that the cameras are there. So they, they do it anyway. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's a whole bunch of stories we still don't know about, things that they were able to cover up. And I don't think it's always just black people. I just think that police officers, the ones who act like that, are just like, they're hungry for something. Adrenaline junkies or what? Like, just want to see what it's like to kill somebody. I don't know how I would feel. Do you think there's, what about, is it a class-related thing, too? Or is there, is there any sort of, do you think that matters, or...? Yeah, I think they're very well aware that they can take lives and not get in trouble for it if it fits certain, you know... Demographics. Like, yeah. How do you feel like, I mean, this is a very sort of deep philosophical question, but how do you feel like we got here? Like, how is it we're in 2016, um, many years after the Civil Rights Act was passed? Like, what happened? Where, where, how did this happen? I think... We didn't get here. I think we've been here and that people thought because, you know, they, they passed a few laws on the books that racism just disappeared. It's like, nah, they signed these things because they were being forced to, like, but if it was up to the government at the time, I don't think it, they would have signed anything. There was just so much pressure, like, okay, fine, we got to give them a couple rights because now, like, we're kind of tripping. But if no one would have pressured them, I don't think it would have changed. I don't think anyone's opinions ever changed. Someone told me the other day that they said you can't, you can't, what is it, plant dragon teeth and expect the dragon not to grow or something. Like you mm. can't base a whole party on these type of things and expect in the future not to breed a race of Donald Trumps. Right, right. You know? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like basically I think what you're saying is that you can have a law in the book, but it's not going to change people's hearts and minds and the way they behave exactly. um, okay so now you have this um, activi activist movement Black Lives Matter and um, there's a lot of pressure on anybody who's in a position of prominence whether a celebrity or even somebody who has a big following I would say right. to say something um, you know Rocky um, got dragged, I want to say, for the past couple of days over an interview that took place a year ago. Um, what's your take on that? Do, do artists have an obligation to say something, to stand up for the movement, um, to, have a, to have a stand? Uh, I think, I don't think anyone's forced to. Like, you're not obligated, but it would help. <laughs> it's like, it would be nice if you stared your opinion, but you can't get mad at people when their opinion isn't necessarily what you wanted to hear. You know, I didn't even read this whole interview. Like, I just like saw bits and pieces and it's just like, I have a feeling it was taken out of context, but it's just, 
we're not all going to agree, even in celebrities. And it's like, are, are they going to say that we don't want celebrity opinions anymore if the biggest celebrity is actually on the opposing side and we don't like that? Like, I feel like we only want celebrities to speak when we think that they're going to say what we want them to say. Mm. Because any other time, we're not worried about celebrities. Any other time, we're attacking celebrities all day. And then we're like, so you're just not going to say anything? Mm. And it's just like, you weren't fucking with me yesterday. Right. But... You know, I personally believe in, like, using the little bit of influence I have to, you know, say something. Okay. So, um, MIA, she got bounced from the Afropunk concert in London because... Oh, yeah, I read that. What, I don't even know what, what happened there. I think she was viewed as sort of erasing the whole concept of Black Lives Matter and... <gasps> Oh, yeah, I saw her. She, like, tweeted something about, like, it's, you know, we only refugees. talk about black people mm-hmm, or mm-hmm, it there. Mm-hmm. I'm an MIA fan, but she got to chill. Like, we have so much stuff going on. Like, there's just, you can't get mad that this is being talked about right now. It's like, if you want your issue to be spoken about, then speak about it. It's like, everybody, like they said, all lives matter. It's just, that, you know? We're trying to do what we can so people care about our lives, and then you do what you can so care about your lives. But you can't get mad at this movement because, what, it's bigger than yours? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, stupid. She was doing a little bit of a racing, I would say, for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> being extra. Hmm? She's being extra. Yeah. Um, what about yeah, the flip side? If you are constantly, as a um, black person on social media, being exposed to these super gruesome images, um, in a way, uh, you could almost look at that as a form of terrorism, too. Um, Do you, because I want to say with the police officers, the news didn't show as much about them and whatnot. Do you feel like psychically, at times, you have to protect yourself? in that respect oh yeah half the time i can't even really get on the internet and watch the videos i used to be really obsessed with watching every video and i try to show my boyfriend like oh look at this look at that but it's just i don't want to get desensitized to it because i already feel myself getting desensitized to some stuff i watched a video the other day of some guy getting like i don't even think it was in america but some guy getting like shot like 40 times just on twitter and i didn't even blink like i was just like wow and that should not be my response Mm -hmm. i should be repulsed i should be But, you know, you see so much of it, it's almost like they want, not that they, but that we're just getting just desensitized or not feeling as strongly or as passionately about it. And I don't want it, I don't want it to be like that. So how do you protect yourself? Just kind of try to stay off social media sometimes Mm -hmm. or just stay off the internet in general and just be outside in the real world and just always stay connected because... You know, you could go crazy watching all that stuff, especially if you're not actually doing anything about it. Um, yeah, if all you're doing is watching videos. I know from being on your Instagram account that you were uptown and you ran into your um, old friend Yam's mom um, at an event in, in yesterday, a party or something like that. Yes. Um, I wonder, I think based on what you said before, that he probably does speak to you. And, and, and what, would you, what do you feel like are the messages that you hear from him to you um, as sometimes maybe you go through difficulties or fun times or whatever? When I'm messing up, I hear his head say, like, you're fucking bugging, dog. <laughs> like, I hear, I hear it every time, but it's always just good messages. It's just like, even if I'm, I feel like I'm about to go off the deep end, I just, I feel like I hear him saying, like, don't let me have passed in vain and that's what i've been hearing a lot in my head like don't let this have been in vain all this have been in vain remember that i believed in you or whatever just to stay focused like it's all about staying focused and continuing with this dream that he had because i mean it doesn't have to die Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know just that's that's really it that's very awesome he was definitely um about like I guess he probably had a serious side that maybe you may have been exposed to that 
in terms of just being on your focus and on your grind. Oh yeah, when he was working, he was working. Like mm -hmm. he's very playful, very funny, and like entertaining and everything. But like, there's a reason that yeah, everyone respects him so much. You know, there's definitely a business it. side there. Mm -hmm. Gotta be honest. Woke up this morning, skyline was sunny. Rolled up, I